Please take your seat. The decision in the matter of Anudo Ocheng Anudo versus Tanzania will be read by the Vice President, Justice Ben Kyoko. Thank you. The, the court composed of Sylvain Ore, President, Ben Kyoko, Vice President, Gerard Nyugeko, El Haj Gise, Rafa Benashu, Nitiam Eso Menge, Marie Therese Mukamuliza, Tujilan R. Chizumira, Shafika Ben Saula, judges, and Robert Eno, registrar. In the matter of Anundo Ocheng Anundo, represented by advocate Jane Mary Ruhundwa, country director Asal Maxis, Tanzania, and advocate Majabu Khalid, lawyer, versus the United Republic of Tanzania, represented by Mrs. Sarah D. Ms. Sarah D. Mwaipopo, Director, Division of Constitutional Affairs and Human Rights, Ms. Nikasori Sarakikia, Assistant Director, Human Rights, Principal State Attorney, Mr. Baraka Lubanda, Ambassador, Head of Legal Unit, Minister of Foreign Affairs, International and East African Regional Cooperation, Ms. Ainda Kisumo, Senior State Attorney, Attorney General's Chambers, Ms. Blandina Kasagama, Legal Officer, Minister of Foreign Affairs, International and East African Regional Cooperation. Advocate Abubakar Murisha, Senior State Attorney, Attorney General's Chambers. And Advocate Musila Mugaza, Inspector at the Ministry of Home Affairs and Immigration, Immigration Department. The parties. The applicant is Anudo Ocheng Anudo, who states that he was born in 1979 in Masinono, Butiama, United Republic of Tanzania. The application is filed against the United Republic of Tanzania, here in after referred to as the respondent state, which became a party to the African Charter on Human and People's Rights on 21 December 1986, and to the Protocol to the African Charter on Human and People's Rights on the establishment of an African Court on Human and People's Rights on 10 February 2008. It posted the declaration prescribed under Article 34 sub Article 6 of the protocol recognizing the jurisdiction of the court to receive cases from individuals and NGOs on 29 March 2010. The respondent state also became a party to the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights on 11 July 1976 and to the International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights on 11 June 1978. Subject of the application. The application relates to the withdrawal of nationality and expulsion from the United Republic of Tanzania of the applicant by the respondent state. The facts are stated by the applicant. The applicant states that in 2012, he approached the Tanzanian authorities of the Bahati District Police Station to process formalities for his marriage. The police decided to retain his passport on the grounds that there were suspicions regarding his Tanzanian citizenship. His Tanzanian nationality was withdrawn and he was then deported to the Republic of Kenya, which in turn 
ex exporting back to the United Republic of Tanzania, but because he could not enter the country, he remained in the no man's land between the Tanzania-Kenya border in Surare. On 2nd September 2013, the applicant sent a letter to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Home Affairs and Immigration, requesting to know why his travel document was confiscated by the police. Between April and May 2014, the Immigration Service opened an investigation and questioned certain residents of the village of Masimono, notably the applicant indicated to be his biological parents. Many of them attested that the applicant was the biological son of Anundo Achok and Dokas Rombo Jacob, with the exception of his uncle, Alau Achok, his father's brother, who stated that the applicant was born in Kenya to one Damaris Jacobo and subsequently migrated to Tanzania. The applicant indicated having written to the Prevention and Combating of Corruption Bureau, informing the Bureau that immigration officers had asked him to give, to give them a, a bribe, which he refused to do. By a letter dated 21 August 2014, the Minister of Home Affairs and Immigration informed the applicant that after careful verification of all the relevant documents, officials of the Immigration Department had come to the conclusion that he was not a citizen of Tanzania and that the, his Tanzanian passport number, which is indicated there, had been issued on the basis of fake documents. The minister's letter further stated that the applicant's passport had been cancelled and an order issued for him to report to the immigration office for information as to what steps to take to obtain Tanzanian nationality. In response to that invitation, the applicant on 26 August 2014, unaware of the minister's letter dated 21 August 2014, went to the immigration office at Manyara with a view to having his passport returned. He alleges that upon arrival, he was arrested, detained, and beaten. Seven days later, that is on 1 September 2014, he was expelled with immigration officers escorting him to the Kenyan border, after, you, after which he was compelled to sign a notice of deportation and a document attesting that he's a Kenyan citizen. On 5 October 2014, the applicant's father brought the matter to the attention of the Prime Minister of the Respondent State, seeking annulment of the decision to strip his son of his citizenship and for his deportation. The applicant's father's letter was transmitted to the Minister of Home Affairs and Immigration for consideration and appropriate action. On 3 December 2014, the Minister of Home Affairs and Immigration confirmed the applicant's expulsion. In Kenya, the applicant was on 3rd November 2014 found in a comatose condition with bruises and injuries and was taken to hospital. On 6 November 2014, he was arraigned before the Omar Bay Resident Magistrates Court in Kenya, which declared him as being in, in a regular status in the territory and sentenced him to pay a fine for illegal stay. The applicant was again expelled to Tanzania following that decision. The applicant alleges that he has since been living in secret in the no man's land between the territory of the respondent state and the Republic of Kenya in very difficult conditions without basic social or health services. Alleged violations. The applicant alleges that the confiscation of his passport, the illegal immigrant status issued against him and his expulsion from the United Republic of Tanzania deprived him of his right to Tanzanian nationality, guaranteed and protected under Articles 15, Sub-Article 1 and 17 of the Tanzanian Constitution, and Article 15, Subsection 2 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. In his reply to the respondent state, in, in, the, in, in, their, in the reply to the, the respondent state's response, the applicant through his, sorry, in, in the reply of the applicant to the respondent state's response, the applicant, through his counsel, further states that by depriving him of the Tanzanian nationality and expelling him to Kenya, which in turn declared him as being in a regular situation, the respondent state violated a number of his fundamental rights, the right to freedom of movement and residence in his own country, uh, and he cited Article 12 of the Charter. 
the right to liberty and security of the person and freedom from arbitrary arrest and detention as provided in Article 91 of the ICESCR and Article 6 of the Charter, the right to equality before the law, the right to be presumed innocent until proven guilty, the right to a fair trial and public hearing guaranteed, guaranteed under Article 15 of the ICCPR and Article 7B of the Charter, the right to an appeal to competent national organs against acts violating its fundamental rights as recognized and guaranteed by conventions, laws, regulations, and customs in force under Article 7A of the Charter, the right to participate freely in the government of his country, either directly or through freely chosen representatives, as provided for under Article 13 of the Charter and Article 25.1 of the ICCPR, the right of access to public office and the use of public service in his country as provided under Article 13.2 of the Charter and Article 25.2 of the ICCPR, the right to work as provided under Article 15 of the Charter and 6 of the ICESCR, the right to enjoy the best attainable state of physical and mental health as guaranteed by Article 16 of the Charter, the right to protection of his family by the respondent state as provided under Article 18 of the Charter, and the right to an adequate standard of living for himself and his family as provided under Article 11 of the ICESCR, the right to marry and found a family guaranteed by Article 23 of the ICCPR, and the right to take part in the cultural life of his community as provided under Article 17 of the Charter. Uh, prayers of the parties. The applicant prays the court to order that the immigration authorities' decision to expel him from his country be declared null and void. Further, in his reply to the respondent state's response, the applicant prays the court to order the following measures. Cancel the prohibited, prohibited immigrant notice issued against him and reinstate his nationality by declaring him a citizen of the United Republic of Tanzania allow him to enter and stay in the respondent state like all its other citizens, ensure his protection by the respondent state as he does for other citizens, and protect him from victimization on account of his case, and four, reform his immigration law to guarantee the right to a fair trial before taking any decision that may de deprive a person of his fundamental right, like the right to nationality. The respondent state's prayers. The respondent state prays the court to declare that it has no jurisdiction to adjudicate the application, declare the application inadmissible on the grounds that it has not met the admiss admissibility conditions stipulated under Article 40, sub Article 5, and 6 of the rules, declare that the respondent has not violated the applicant's right to personal freedom and the right to life declare that the allegations of corruption are false, dis dismiss the application for lack of merit, and grant it leave to file additional evidence pursuant to Rule 50 of the Rules of Court. Jurisdiction. In terms of Rule 39.1 of the Rules, the Court shall conduct preliminary examination of its jurisdiction. In this respect, the respondent state raises objection to the material jurisdiction of the Court on which the court shall make a ruling before considering other aspects of jurisdiction. Objection to the court's material jurisdiction. I will not deal with the, the basis of the, uh, or the details of the objection by the respondent state. I will go straight to the position of the court. The court notes that in actual fact, the application does not indicate the articles or human rights instruments guarantees, guaranteed, guaranteeing the rights alleged to be violated. However, in his reply to the respondent state's response, the applicant specifies the rights allegedly violated as well as the international instruments which guarantee the said rights. It follows that the application raises allegations of violation of human rights guaranteed by international legal instruments applicable before this court and ratified by the respondent state, particularly the Charter, the ICCPR, and the ICESCR. The court notes is established case law on this issue and reiterates that the rights allegedly 
uh, breached need not be specified in the application. It is sufficient that the subject of the application relates to the rights guaranteed by the Charter or by any other relevant human rights instrument uh, ratified by the state concerned. Accordingly, the court dismisses the respondent state's objection and rules that it has material jurisdiction to hear the case. Other aspects of uh, jurisdiction. The court notes that is personal, temporal, and territorial jurisdiction is not contested by the state parties. Besides, nothing on record indicates that the court does not have personal, temporal, and territorial jurisdiction. And therefore, the court holds that it has jurisdiction to hear the instant case. Admissibility. Again, I will go straight to the objections. Uh, objection based on the non-exhaustion of local remedies. Again, here there were extensive submissions by the parties, objection by the respondent state and, and response by the applicant. So I'll go to the court's position. The court notes that the applicant did in actual fact exercise the remedies provided by the Tanzanian Immigration Act by first seizing the Minister of Home Affairs and Immigration on the matter. He also sent a letter to the Prime Minister. The court also notes that beyond these remedies exercised by the applicant, the Tanzanian Immigration Act is silent on whether or how the Minister's decision can be challenged in a court of law. With regard to the respondent state's contention that the applicant could have challenged the Minister's decision in the High Court by way of judicial review, the court notes that at the time the applicant was in a position to exercise the state remedy, he had already been expelled from Tanzania and was no longer in the territory of the respondent state. In the circumstances, it would have been very difficult for him to exercise the review remedy. Consequently, the court dismisses the respondent state's objection to the admissibility of the application on grounds of failure to exhaust local remedies. Objection on the ground that the application was not filed within a reasonable time. Again, I'll go straight to the position of the court. The court notes that Rule 40, sub Rule 6 of the rules, which in substance reproduces Article 56, sub Article 6 of the Charter speaks simply of a reasonable time from the date local remedies were exhausted or from the date set by the court as being the commencement of the time limit within which it shall be seized with the matter. The court has established in its previous judgments that the reason reasonableness of the period for seizure of the court depends on the particular circumstances of each case and must be determined on a case-by-case -case basis. In the instant case, the court notes that the applicant did, as a matter of fact, filed the instant application on 24 May 2015, whereas the minister's letter in response to his appeal was dated 3 December 2014, thus representing a period of five months and 21 days between the two cases. For the court, this period is reasonable, considering in particular the fact that the applicant was outside the country. The court therefore dismisses the objection to the admissibility of the application for non-submission of the same within a reasonable time. Admissibility conditions not in contention between the parties. The court notes that compliance with sub rules 1, 2, 3, 4, and 7 of rule 40 of the rules is not in contention and that nothing on record indicates that the requirements of the state sub rules have not been complied with. In view of the force aforesaid, the court finds that the admissibility conditions have been met and that the instant application is admissible. Merits. The court notes that the instant application invokes the violation of three fundamental rights. The applicant's right to nationality and the right not to be arbitrarily deprived of his nationality, the right not to be arbitrarily expelled, and the right to have his cause heard by a court. The court notes that the rights of which the application alleges violation concern not only the rights above cited,
but also other incidental rights. On violations arising from the withdrawal of nationality and related rights, um, and the first limb of that would be the applicant's right to nationality and the right not to be arbitrarily deprived of his nationality. Um, I will skip the submissions by the applicant and the respondent on this point and go straight to the, the, the opinion of the court. The court notes that before the applicant's nationality was withdrawn by the respondent state, it was considered a Tanzanian national with all the rights and duties associated with his nationality. It is important to state here that the conferring of nationality to any per person is the sovereign act of states. The question here is for the court to determine whether the withdrawal of the applicant's nationality was arbitrary or whether it conformed with international human rights standards. The court knows that neither the Charter nor the ICCPR contains an article that deals specifically with the right to nationality. However, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which is recognized as forming part of customary international law, prohibits under Article 15 thereof that, and I quote, everyone has the right to a nationality. No one shall be arbitrarily deprived of his nationality. End of quote. In international law, it is recognized that the granting of nationality falls within the habit of the sovereignty of states, and consequently each state determines the conditions for attribution of nationality. However, the power to de deprive a person of his or her nationality has to be exercised in accordance with international standards to avoid the risk of statelessness. International law does not allow, save under very exceptional situations, the loss of nationality. The said conditions are, they must be founded on clear legal basis, two, must serve a legitimate purpose that conforms with international law, three, must be proportionate to the interest protected, and four, must install procedural guarantees which must be respected, allowing the concerned to defend himself before an independent body. In the instant case, the applicant maintains that is of Tanzanian nationality, which is being contested by the respondent state. In the circumstance, circumstances, it is necessary to establish on whom lies the burden of proof. In the opinion of the court, since the respondent state is contesting the applicant's nationality held since his birth on the basis of legal document established by the respondent state itself, the burden is on the respondent state to prove the contrary. The court notes that in this case, the applicant has always held Tanzanian nationality with all the related rights and duties up to the time of his arrest he had a birth certificate and passport like every other Tanzanian citizen. The court further notes in the, that in the instant case, the pa passport in question was delivered by Tanzanian authorities. The applicant's birth certificate attached to his application before this court indicates that his name is Anudo Ocheng Anudo and that his father is Achok Anudo. On the respondent claim, state claims that the applicant's father's birth affidavit attached to the application for the passport in 2016 bears the name of Anundo Cheng, but that according to testimony, his father was rather called Andrew Anundo. Mr. Achok Anundo testified or not that he was indeed the applicant's father and in addition requested a DNA test to corroborate his assertions. Mrs. Dokas Rombo Jacob also testified or not that she was the applicant's mother. Other residents of the village, including old people and community leaders, affirmed in writing that the applicant is Tanzanian, born in Tanzania. Among the residents was one Patricia O. Sondo, who asserted having been present and assisted the applicant's mother at the time of his birth and clearly describing the place of birth. The court knows that the respondent state's argument reposes on the statement of the applicant's angle 
who asserted that the applicant's mother is a citizen of Kenya and on the contradiction observed between the information provided by the applicant and the statements of his supposed relations. The court notes also that the applicant's citizenship was being challenged that three years after his birth and that he has used the same citizenship for all those years leading an ordinary life, pursuing his studies in the schools of the respondent state and in other countries, and that he has always lived and worked like every other citizen in the respondent state's territory where he had been exercising a known profession. The court further notes that the respondent state does not contest the applicant's parents' Tanzanian nationality, just as it did not prosecute the applicant for forgery and making use of false documents with the intent to defraud. The court also notes that in view of the contradiction in the witness's statements about the applicant's paternity, the, uh, the proof would have been a DNA test. A scientific DNA test was what was required and was requested by Achong Onudo, who until then claimed to be the applicant's father. By refusing to carry out the DNA test requested by Achong Onudo, the respondent state missed an opportunity to obtain proof of its claims. It follows that the decision to deprive the applicant of his nationality, Tanzanian nationality, is unjustified. The court is of the opinion that the evidence provided by the respondent state concerning the justification for the withdrawal of the applicant's nationality is not convincing and therefore holds in conclusion that the deprivation of the applicant's nationality was arbitrary, contrary to Article 15, sub Article 2 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Applicants' right not to be expelled arbitrarily. Again, there are submissions by the applicant and by the respondent state. And I go straight to what the court has found. The court notes that the applicant alleged the violation of Article 12 of the Charter, which stipulates that every individual shall have the right to freedom of movement and residence. Every individual shall have the right to leave any country, including his own, and to return to his country. In the opinion of the court, the relevant portion of the provision, uh, which relates to the instant matter, is Article 3 of 2, in particular the right to return to his country. In the instant case, the court will consider this aspect, notwithstanding the fact that the applicant left the respondent state's territory involuntarily. Having found that the deprivation of the applicant's nationality was arbitrary, the question that arises at this juncture is whether a citizen can be expelled from his own country or prevented from returning to his country. In this regard, the United Nations Human Rights Committee has found that there are few circumstances in which a ban on entry into one's own country may be reasonable. A state party may not by deporting a person to a third country, prevent that person from returning to his own country. The court notes that the applicant's expulsion resulted from the arbitrary withdrawal of his nationality by the respondent state. This procedure is contrary to the requirements of international law, which stipulates, and I quote, a state cannot turn its citizen <coughs> into a foreigner. After depriving him of his nationality, for the sole purpose of expelling him, end of quote. However, the court notes that even if the respondent state regarding the applicant as an alien, it is clear that the condition of his expulsion did not comply with the rule prescribed in Article 13 of the ICCPR, which stipulates, and I quote, that, I quote, an alien lawfully in the territory of a state party to the present covenant may be expelled therefrom only in pursuance of a decision reached in accordance with the, with the law and shall accept where compelling reasons of national security otherwise require, be allowed to submit the reasons against his expulsion and to have his case reviewed by and be represented by, for the purpose before it the competent authority or a person or persons especially designated by the competent authority, end of quote. The court notes that the objective of the above aforecited ICPR article 
is to protect a foreigner from any form of arbitrary expulsion by providing him with legal guarantees. He should be able to present his case, his cause before a competent authority, and cannot in any case be expelled arbitrarily. The court also noted that in this case, the applicant was deported to Kenya, which in turn declared him as being in a, in a regular situation. This proves that prior to his expulsion, the respondent state failed to take the necessary measures to prevent the applicant from being in a situation of statelessness. As a matter of fact, uh, prior to his expulsion to Kenya, the respondent state could have satisfied itself if the applicant is not Tanzanian, that is a Kenyan. The court also notes that the applicant's present situation whereby he is rejected by both Tanzania and Kenya as a national makes him a stateless person as defined by Article 1 of the Convention relating to the status of stateless persons. Consequently, the court holds that given the fact that he had been considered by the respondent state as a national prior to the withdrawal of his nationality, he could not be arbitrarily expelled. In any event, even if it were to be assumed that he was an alien, the respondent state could still not expel him in the arbitrary manner it did, and this would constitute a violation of Article 13 of the ICCPR. The court therefore holds in conclusion that the, mat the manner in which the applicant was expelled by the respondent state constitutes a violation of Article 13 of the ICCPR, irrespective of whether the applicant was considered a national or an alien. The applicant's right to be heard by a judge. Again, I'm skipping all the submissions by the applicant and the respondent state. I go straight to what the, the, the opinion of the court. The court notes that the African Commission on Human and People's Rights has held that in matters of deprivation of nationality, the state has the obligation to offer the individual the opportunity to challenge the decision, and his opinion that the state should conduct a judicial inquiry in the proper form in accordance with national legislation, end of quote. In the instant case, the court notes that in matters of immigration, the Tanzanian Immigration Law of 1995, defining illegal immigrant, provides that the decision of the Minister of Home Affairs declaring a person an illegal immigrant shall be final, Articles 10F. It follows that in this case, the applicant was a prior unable to appeal against the minister's administrative decision before a national court. The court in any case holds that even if in the, uh, in the silence of the uh, aforementioned immigration law, the applicant had under a general principle of law the right to seize a national court, but the fact that he had been arrested and then expelled immediately to Kenya did not afford him the possibility of exercising such a remedy. Besides, when he later found refuge in the no man's land, it was very difficult for him to exercise this remedy. The court finds in conclusion that by declaring the applicant an illegal immigrant, therefore denying him Tanzanian nationality, which he has until then enjoyed, without the possibility of an appeal before a national court, the respondent state violated his right to have his cause heard by a judge within the meaning of Article 71A, B, and C, of the ICCPR. The court notes further that the Tanzanian Citizenship Act contains gaps in much as it does not allow citizens by birth to exercise judicial remedy where their nationality is challenged as required by international law. It is in the opinion of the court that the respondent state has the obligation to fill the said gaps. Other alleged violation. Uh, in the opinion of the court, the court notes on this other alleged violation. The court notes some of the alleged violations relate to the applicant's living conditions in the said no man's land, while others concern the rights under which the applicant would enjoy a did not lost his nationality and he did not been expelled from the United Republic of Tanzania. In the opinion of the court, therefore, the violation of the aforesaid related rights is a consequence of the major violations. The court, having established the violation of the right not to be arbitrarily deprived of his nationality, the right not to be arbitrarily expelled from a state, and the violation of the right to judicial remedy, 
defers consideration of the related violations to the stage of consideration of the request for reparations. Remedies sought in its application, the applicant prays the court to order the annulment of the decision of the immigration authorities to expel him from his own country, including the notice of prohibited immigrant, restoration of his nationality by declaring him a citizen of the United Republic of Tanzania, allow him to return and remain in the respondent state like all its other citizens, order the respondent state to protect him against victimization as a consequence of the present application, order the respondent state to amend its immigration legislation in order to guarantee a fair trial for persons likely to be deprived of their right to nationality. During the oral proceedings, the applicant reiterated this request. There were also submissions, length submissions by the respondent. The court holds that it does not have the power to rule on the request made by the applicants in paragraphs 118 to annul the decision of the respondent state to expel him. The court notes that the parties did not make submissions on other forms of reparations. It will therefore determine this issue at a later stage of the proceedings. Course. The court notes that in their pleadings, neither of the parties made submissions concerning costs. According to Rule 30 of the Rules, unless otherwise decided by the court, each party shall bear its own cause. The court shall decide on the issue of cause when making a ruling on other forms of reparations. Operative part. For these reasons, the court unanimously on jurisdiction dismisses the objection of, on, on lack of jurisdiction, declares that it has jurisdiction on admissibility, dismisses the objection on ad inadmissibility, declares the application admissible, declares that the respondent state arbitrarily deprived the applicant of on merits now declares that the respondent state arbitrarily deprived the applicant of his Tanzanian nationality in violation of Articles 15.2 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, declares that the respondent state has violated the applicant's right not to be expelled arbitrarily, declares that the respondent state has violated Article 7 of the Charter and 14 of the ICCPR related to the applicant's right to be heard, orders the respondent state to amend its legislation to provide individuals with judicial remedies in the event of dispute over their citizenship, orders the respondent state to take all the necessary steps to restore the applicant's rights by allowing him to return to the national territory ensure its protection and submit a report to the court within 45 days, reserves its ruling on the prayers for other forms of reparation and on costs, allows the applicant to file his written submissions on other forms of reparation within 30 days from the date of notification of this judgment and the respondent state to file its submissions within 30 days from the date of receipt of the applicant's submissions. Uh, signed, Silve Ore, President Ben Kyoko, Vice President, Gerard Nyungo, Judge, sorry, Gerard Nyungeko, Judge, El Haj Gise, Judge, Rafa Benashu, Judge, Nitiam Eso Menge, Judge, Mary Teresa Mukamuliza, Judge, to Jilan Arachizumila Judge, Shafika Ben Saula Judge, and Robert Eno Registrar. Done at Arusha this 22nd day of March in the year 2018 in English and French, the English text being authoritative. This is the decision of the court.